Hey piano people, in today's tutorial, I cannot wait to share with you the number one practice method that will solve every problem in your piano playing. I want you to stick around for the entire video because even if you've tried it before, chances are that you're going to realize throughout watching this tutorial that maybe you've been making a little mistake when using it, or maybe you haven't been utilizing it to its full potential which means you haven't been gaining all of the benefits that this method has to offer. Hey piano people, welcome to Ashley on Music Studio where I'm going to teach you how to practice smarter, not harder. Let's dive in. The number one practice method to solve every problem in your piano playing is the post-it method. And the best thing about this practice method is that it is incredibly versatile. It can be used in the beginning stages of learning a piece to learn with a much higher level of accuracy so that you can lay a solid foundation that leads to less frustration and mistakes later on. But it can also be used if you've already started learning a piece and there's sections of that piece that you know aren't comfortable or that you keep making mistakes on. And for those types of situations, you can use this method to troubleshoot and to drill out mistakes. I'm going to show you both applications, but let's start with learning a piece. So let's Let's say that you want to learn how to play Haydn's Sonata number 53, which is XVI number 34 in E minor. This is going to work for any piece, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to demonstrate using this piece. So what you would do is put your post-its so that you can only see the first measure of the piece. We're going to start with one measure, but I want you to know that this could really be any section of music. I would recommend going measure by measure, especially because that's going to give you the brain space to really pay attention and focus on what you're doing. But you could even go less than a measure if the piece that you're learning is really, really challenging. Or if the piece is a little bit easier, you might go in a section of two or three measures at a time. So now that I have my post-its covering up everything that comes before and after this measure, my brain and my eyes can just focus on this measure. And now it's time to learn it with a high level of accuracy. So inside Casual the Confident Piano Player program, you get the confidence roadmap, which shows you exactly which milestones to hit and in which order. But for the sake of this video, let's say we're going to do rhythm and notes first. Okay. So I'm going to start by counting one, la, li, two, la, li. Now notice how slow I'm going. And notice that I'm following the fingering that's written in the music and notice that I'm counting out loud. These are all really important things to be doing at the very beginning stages of learning a piece so that you lay a solid foundation. Now, just because I did it accurately one time does not mean that I'm going to move my post-it to the next measure. If I did it accurately one time, that means now I'm going to try to repeat it many times in a row accurately. One, la, li, two, la, Okay, and I'm going to do it again. One, la, li, two, la, li. Now, as you're practicing in these beginning stages, if you find that you're making mistakes and you can't do it more than two or three times in a row accurately, that is a sign that you are going too fast or that you're working on too big of a chunk of music. So if you find that in this measure you're making mistakes, I would say put your post-its smaller so you're focusing on half of the measure and go even slower than you were just going so that your brain has even more space to comprehend and think about what you're doing. Now, most people are not willing to go about learning a piece with this level of accuracy and consistency, because when I tell people about this method, their first comment is almost always, oh my gosh, that's going to take so long and seemingly it would. But what ends up happening is because you are learning everything in the piece with such a high level of accuracy and consistency, your brain remembers it better. And so while it might feel day to day like it's taking you longer to learn the piece, it actually in the long run takes you significantly shorter. And I get comments here on YouTube videos every single day from people who have tried this method and are blown away by how much better it makes them sound and how much faster they are able to learn. So now let me show you how to use this method if you're already learning a piece and you want to either make certain sections sound better or you're not sure why certain sections aren't sounding good and you need to figure out why. Let's say that you are learning the merry-go-round of life and you're working on the B section that sounds like this. Now you know when you get to this section of the music that something goes wrong because every time you try to play it, let's say it's like really slow and you're playing wrong notes 
and you know oh. that your brain gets really overwhelmed and your hands can't do what you want them to do, but you're not sure why. So what we would do in this instance is we would start by taking the section of music where you know the mistake is. So we're going to start by taking the pickup to measure 24 all the way through the end of measure 26. And this is going to allow us to focus on a smaller section of music and we can count and go slow just like we did in the first application of this method. So and three and one And notice that I can't get to that chord on time. And three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, two. Whoops, and I played that wrong. So I know two things went wrong. One, I know in measure 24, I had trouble getting to the chord on beat two in my left hand. And then in measure 26, I also had trouble getting to the chord on beat two of my left hand. So that tells me that those two parts might potentially be where the trouble is. So let's focus on one. We're going to focus on the chord in measure 24. So I'm going to take my post-its and I'm going to make this section even smaller. So now I'm just focusing on the pickup to measure 24 and measure 24. So let's play it again. And three and one and and I can't find two. So I know that that is where the issue is. Before, I knew that this three and a half measure section had some issues, but I wasn't sure what the issues were. But now that I've used the post-it method to isolate this small section and to really hone in, I've noticed that, okay, it's actually specifically transitioning from beat one to beat two in the left hand of measure 24. So now this is the beautiful thing. I can use the post-it method and I can just focus on the left hand, beat one to beat two in measure 24. And I can drill that a hundred times or as many times as it takes until that is no longer an issue. So I've used the post-it method not only to diagnose very specifically what the issue is, but now by using those post-its to focus in on where the issue is, I'm going to drill it until it's fixed so that I never have to think about this problem again. Now, if you wanna take this method and build on it by learning the one rule that will help you learn any piece 10 times faster, I'm going to link another tutorial where I share with you that rule and how to implement it with the post-it method on the end screen. And I'm also going to link a free sight reading workshop that I taught a few weeks ago. If you haven't checked this out yet, you're definitely going to wanna to snag a copy of it because you're going to learn how to sight read with more accuracy and more flow every single time. You can grab that video with the one rule that you need to follow and also that sight reading workshop right here on the end screen. Happy practicing.